Hello everyone and welcome back to the Nottingham Forest career mode. This is the finale and this will be the episode where we find out if we're making it back into the Premier League or staying in the Championship. Now before we do get into today's episode I just thought I'd quickly clear some things up and by clear some things up I mean where I've been for the past two weeks. So as a few of you probably have noticed I have not uploaded for the past two weeks and I was sort of on a schedule of uploading once a week apart from the first week I did this series where I went mad and uploaded once a day. Um, yeah, I've been I've been missing for the past two weeks and there is uh, valid reasons for one week, the other week not so much, but um, the week following the previous episode of uh, Nottingham Forest, which um, I can't remember what number that is now, uh, I went to Leeds for a friend's wedding and um, stayed there for the following week and came back the Friday after the episode and I usually record on the Monday to Friday period I don't record on the weekend because I go to Plymouth Argyle games on the Saturday and people are in the house it's quite awkward to record without looking like an utter twat so yeah that's why I didn't do it that week the week after that though I was just basically lazy I just didn't really want to do it um I sort of just spent more time playing random shit like FIFA and Vermintide and stuff like that which I didn't record it won't be on the channel unless people want to see stuff like that then I'll whack them on the channel but um yeah so that's my bad for not uploading last week I definitely should have uploaded last week but good news is to make up for it I will be uploading my new football manager series uh this week as well uh but we'll address more of that at the end of the episode I feel because it's a big sort of um a big sort of ask the uh, the viewers what they want sort of uh, scenario. So we'll look at that at the end of the episode. But yeah, um, sorry for not uploading for the past two weeks. And uh, please forgive me, please. Just find somewhere in your heart. Anyway, enough about me missing. Uh, we're going to have to jog our memories about what's happened since uh, the two weeks I've been gone. And yeah, we are guaranteed a playoff spot. Um, last game, I think the last game of last episode was a 4-1 loss to Middlesbrough. Something like that. I remember us getting absolutely demolished by them, which uh, was very annoying, I think, at the time. But yeah, we managed to get playoffs, which is something we aimed for. Now it's whether or not we can pry Blackburn out of that automatic promotion spot and um, get in there and get the easy way up. But who knows? And there's still two more games left. Uh, you know, anything can happen. But Anyway, that, this is the league table at the moment. Uh, as you can see, Leeds are guaranteed champions. Blackburn, Forest and Derby have all been confirmed uh, playoff spots. Meanwhile, Preston and West Brom make up the other part of the playoffs. And yeah, they're, they're not confirmed yet, but they're getting there. I mean, um, Aston Villa, Norwich and Sheffield United are all on 60, well, high 60s in points. So... If they won both their games and those two lost both their games, and they could obviously come out of there, but their goal difference is so shit. So unless they win those games by like 10 plus goals, I really can't see it. So for argument's sake, I think it's safe to say that Preston and West Brom are going to be the other playoff candidates um, for us, unless we manage to uh, knock Blackburn down here, which would be ideal because Blackburn were dog shit for the first part of the season. And it's kind of annoying that they're up there. But... We've had lots of ample chances to take them out of there, and we haven't taken them anyway. So, yeah, it's probably justified that they're up there. Anyway, in relegation, Hull, Birmingham and Reading make up the relegation spots, with Bolton being outside of it. <gasps> I know. <laughs> um, Reading are bottom currently, and I'm pretty certain they're all but relegated, unless... I mean, it's so tight. I mean, you've got Reading on 39 points, Birmingham second from bottom on 42 points, Hull... Uh, the top relegation spot, 43 points, and then you've got Rotherham on 44 points, Wigan on 45 points, and Bolton on 46 points, and even fucking Millwall on 47 points. Any one of these guys could face the drop if, point, if they don't win these last two games of the season. So it's quite tight, and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I know I've got playoffs. I've done my job. But yeah, let's get into the first game of this episode, and... Uh, Let's just get a fucking win. <laughs> I don't want to start it off losing. I'm just going to be so triggered if that happens. So here we are on the first game of the episode. We will be playing QPR at Loftus Road. One thing I do want to say before going into this game is um, I think I might have found a glitch in Football Manager. I'm not entirely sure. Someone can tell me if I'm wrong. But um, 
Jordan Smith had a 9.75 training rating, so I praised him for it, and uh, he got poor morale saying, I don't want to talk about this subject again, which I've seen quite a lot in this football manager. Now, I just assumed that it was a bit of a glitch, but when I went to praise his conduct to try and counteract the poor morale from him, uh, it's made it worse. I don't, I've never seen praising someone for conduct, making it worse. But he said the exact same thing again. He said, I don't want to go over this subject again. So is there something in the game now which does basically mean that you can't keep repeating and reiterating the same points over again because it just does piss them off? Because if that's the case, then fair play. But it's kind of annoying because we're going into a very important game and Jordan Smith's pissed off with me for telling him he's uh, doing well in promoting the club in a healthy light and doing well in training. Because, you know, to be fair, if my manager was telling me I was doing a good job, I'd be fucked off too. Anyway, enough talk about that. We are kicking off and let's hope that we can get this win. Highlight now for QPR. Fox picking up the ball. Sudani rolling over to Osborne who shoots and hits the bar. Oh, that's depressing. Highlight now for QPR. Looking to try and send the ball up long. Can't quite do it. Oh, but never mind. Hemed's found the ball and he's fucking scored. Oh, dear. Oh, deary, deary me. We are 1-0 down. 12 minutes in to... A stupid ball that no one thought to pick up. No one marked Hemed. And yeah, good touch and good finish in fairness. But yeah, 1-0 down. Highlight now for Forrest. Corner to come in. Braid cut cash and oh, wow. It is an own goal from Massimo Luongo. As Goncalves delivers the ball in for a corner. Hall clearing it. Cash and Braid cut playing a little bit of... um. Pinball, and it has gone in off the defender, but I'll fucking take it. So there we have it. That is the first half, and we're pretty lucky at the moment. We, uh, we're we drawing. We probably, I mean, in fairness, we probably should be winning, but it's classic football manager for me, and I'm not getting any of my chances on target, so I haven't been able to score a goal. But, um, yeah, the result is probably accurate. Maybe not so much as conceding an own goal for QPR's sake, but still accurate. So here we are, QPR kicking off the second half. Can we get a goal? Goal kick for QPR. QPR still having the ball from said goal kick. Looking to attack from the wing. Cameron and Wuzilek. Looking to do something, can't quite pull it off. Nottingham Forest now have a counter attack. Goncalves winning the ball, giving it to Sudani. Sudani finds Osborne and he just misses. Free kick now for QPR. We've always conceded from... from, from we always concede from free kicks and as proven Jeff Cameron just being lost I mean what the fuck are the Nottingham Forest players doing they didn't even run back they just all stood there highlight now for Forest can Forest equalize in the dying moments of the game or is this just one of those bullshit highlights that come about at the end of the game and don't do anything or are QPR gonna just score in fairness Smith just sending it into the QPR ranks definitely need a better keeper next season Wells looking to get a cross in, and it's definitely one of those highlights where it just shows you at the end of the game for no apparent reason. Even though I'm on key highlights, I still get to see shit like this, and that is it. So, yeah, 2 on loss. Pretty accurate, um, I'd say, looking at the stats now. I mean, we're all over them, but when we've had 18 shots and only three of them on target, you really don't deserve to lose the game if you're that shit and getting paid the amount of money you are to be a footballer in the championship and playing for Nottingham Forest. But, yeah, mini rant, but we'll move on. So as you can see, uh, Blackburn have now guaranteed themselves promotion. A side that was in League One last season is now going up to the Premier League. Okay then. So after that mini rant, we are here at game day two. And yeah, this game doesn't really matter that much. I mean, in terms of who will be playing in the playoffs, yeah, I suppose it does a little bit. But... You know, there'll be there'll be players like um, Ryan Yates probably playing in this game, Carvalho, um, Graben probably at some point, just to, you know, let them have a run out, you know, let them, let them have a bit of fun. But, yeah, apart from that, um, that's basically it. So let's get into the game and let's hope that we can actually get a win in this um, episode, maybe? Yeah, maybe? So here we are, kicking off the first half. Bolton kicking off the first half, to be exact. Corner kick now to come from Bolton. Fuck me. <laughs> We're going to lose to Bolton. We're actually going to lose to fucking Bolton, a team that I have slagged off for this whole series. We're going to lose to. 
Fantastic. 1-0 down. Highlight now. Bolton have the ball. Are they going to make it? 2-0. Lazure picking up the ball. Giving it back to Smith. Who, by the way, I do not rate anymore. Uh, Diaz. Finding Byram. Byram getting a cross in. Osborne to shoot. And it's one all. Come on, Ben Osborne. Sixth goal of the season. Yes, come on. Lovely little play from the boys. Byram looking like he's going to do a cross. Does. Doesn't pan out. Osborne picks the ball back up. And yes, come on. And that is the first half. Again, quite boring. Um, you know, classic. Lots of possession. Lots of shots. None of them on target. So we're drawing. But, you know, hopefully that will change in the second half. Hopefully one of my players will actually, um, you know, do something, maybe. Yeah, we'll see, won't we, I suppose. We'll see. Anyway, let's get into the second half. Highlight now. Forrest playing some good football as you're trying to get a cross in. Couldn't quite pull it off. Panagiotis. Jakob. Back to Panagiotis. Osborne. Jakob. Switching it wide to Byram. Byram getting a cross in. Nothing coming from it. Fuck me. Panagiotis. Lazure. To Figueredo. Panagiotis. Back to centre back. Figueredo. There we go. Oh, come on, Sudan. Hey. Yes. Come on. A win. Maybe. Don't want to jinx it just yet. 2 1. Come on. Lovely little play after, you know, many different attempts. Good switch there from Figueredo. I don't think Diaz actually lofted that over. I think that was one of their players. But shit keeping leads to a Sudani goal. A 24th goal for him. Come on. The corner now for Forrest. Gone Calvez. What? Oh, motherfucker. It came off one of the... Oh, that was really confusing. Didn't even look like it came off of him. Highlight now for Forrest. Byron with a throw in. Cash to Osborne. Osborne switching it wide to Goncalves. Goncalves to run up the pitch. Give it to Lazure. Lazure. I mean, pass. Nothing wrong with the pass there. Definitely just something to do with Goncalves' work ability. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Work rate. Osborne scoring. Fuck me. Awful commentary leading to a fucking good goal. Another goal for Osborne, might I add. So, thank fuck I've got midfielders who could actually shoot because... Yeah, if they couldn't, this would be a bit awkward. Cash to Osborne. Osborne just finding that bottom left corner. Lovely. 3-1 win. Highlight now for QPR, potentially. Cash picking up the ball. Lazure. Switching it to Goncalves. Goncalves looking to play Graben through. Is Graben going to score? Of course he fucking isn't. It's Graben. This should be the final highlight of the game. Panagiotis picking it up from a poor kick from QPR. Osborne to Cash. Cash sending it out to Lazure, to Osborne, to Cash. Just have a crap Cash, I wouldn't mind. Never mind, he's decided to kick it out of the pitch and that is full time. So yeah, that is full time and as you can see, Ben Osborne getting two goals. Sudani getting a goal as well. Sudani did come off injured though, which does worry me. Mainly because if he cannot play in these playoff semi-finals, we're going to have a big issue. Because that means we're going to have to deal with Lewis Graben up front for three games at most. I don't think I can do that. And I think if he has done that to me, it's quite selfish of him. Anyway, let's find out what his injury is. So as you can see, Hilal Sudani is out for five to seven days. I believe that gives him enough time to get back in training for some of the playoff games. But who knows? Anyway, let's uh, get to those playoff games. And yeah, hopefully we don't get bummed. So here we are, it is game day and we are playing Preston in the first of two games against them. This is our away game, so yeah, I know it doesn't work away, uh, no away goals don't count in this, it's not like they, they count for two, so yeah, obviously I would have rather fucking Derby or West Brom over Preston because not only did they beat us last time, they've got Graham Carey playing for them, and I just he's just gonna I know he's just gonna rob me of my of my dream of just getting Nottingham Forest to the Premier League because that is the only dream I've ever had so yeah Graben's up front because Sudan is still injured um and yeah we've had to bring on Virgil Gomez from the youth hopefully hopefully Graben scores <laughs> hopefully Graben scores but anyway let's get into the game and yeah let's just hope all we can do now is hope. Our our future as manager of Forest rests solely 
in Lewis Graben's hand with a hint of Ben Osborne and a dash of Goncalves. Don't do it to me, Kerry. Please. 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 And here it is. We kick off the first half in Deepdale. Highlight now. Forrest. Diaz. Trying to get a cross in. Doesn't pan out. Osborne to cash. Shoots. Forces a save from Rudd. Corner to come for Forrest. Goncalves to put it in. Cash. Rudd catches. Corner kick now from Preston. Get rid of it, lads. Graben picks up the ball. Forrest are on the counter-attack. Graben's wide, so we might have a chance of scoring. Never mind, because he's Graben also crossing. Highlight is still continuing. Rudd kicks it out. Oh, actually, fucking thank you. What is wrong with our defence? So, full-time. Full-time at half-time has come about. And as you can see, we are basically dominating. We just haven't had that goal yet. Um, Jordan Smith being our best player and Declan Rudd being their best player. The goalkeepers are definitely doing something right now. And also, conveniently, the two players who aren't playing well for either team is the right winger and the left winger. So, yeah. Anyway, we are playing well. We've just got to get that goal. We've just got to get that goal. Come on. We go into the second half after giving the team a slight bollocking. Can we get another goal? Robinson switching it to Carey with a bad pass. Highlight now, Forrest. Figueredo trying to send it over to Graben, not realising it's Graben. That he'd have to be relying on. Cash to Diaz. Diaz trying to play it through to Graben and Preston on the counter-attack. Nementia. Four block by Figueredo, I believe. Corner now for Preston. It is cleared. Graben has the ball and loses it just like that. And that is full time. Not many highlights from this game, but I'm not happy. Like, I'm not. We should have easily had a couple of goals there. And, yeah, we've just been denied any chance of getting goals. Um, but then again, that's what happens when you have Lewis Graben as your striker. So, hopefully going into the next game, Sudani makes a difference for us. And hopefully, um, yeah, they continue their... Uh, poor run of attacking form because they could have also scored a couple of goals too to be fair in other unrelated news uh Derek Adams has been sacked by Plymouth Argyle obviously this means something to me because I'm an Argyle fan um who will take over Alan Pardew is three to one on taking over Plymouth Argyle I don't particularly want Nigel Adkins he can fuck off and I don't want uh Josh Lehankenke as well I believe he was the Sheffield Wednesday manager um but yeah if Pardew took over Plymouth, I don't know how I feel about that. Because, yeah, strange. Anyway, let's get into the second game of the uh, playoff semi-finals and let's hope that we can get the win. So here we are. It is potentially the final game of the episode. Can we beat Preston at the city ground and send ourselves to Wembley for the playoff final against what looks like it's going to be West Brom because they beat Derby 3-0 somehow. So, yeah. Even if we do win this game, beating West Brom on the form that they're on right now is going to be tough. But, yeah, I'm... Very dubious as to what's going to happen if we don't win this game, but I suppose we'll talk more about that after this game. So, yeah, let's just get into it and let's just pray to God we can get a win. So, here we are. It is a game that could potentially cause lots of problems. Highlight now for Forrest. Smith playing it out to Figueredo. Figueredo. Sending it over to Sudani, or at least trying to. Couldn't quite catch a Rudd off guard. Cash. To Osborne. Osborne to give it to Carvalho. Carvalho to shoot! And it's 1-0. Come on! Carvalho coming on for Goncalves before the game started. Because as some of you may have been aware, he was on Goncalves originally. Decided to switch it up because Goncalves has been playing poor. And this is why. Carvalho cutting into the D. Shooting into the top right corner. What a goal. Come on, Forrest. Come on. Highlight now, Carey to cross it in, and oh, fuck you, Graham Carey. I mean, I love you really, but fuck sakes, Callum Robertson equalises. Woods getting the ball, don't know what the fuck happened to Lazure, he fell over. Carey puts the ball in, Smith dives, but the post gives a perfect rebound back to Robinson. Highlight now in the 45th minute. Ball sent out to Maguire. 
Preston are on the counter attack, looking to play in Robinson. Robinson puts it across the goal, and Daniel fucking Johnson has scored. Oh no, it's all going tits up. Just so many issues with this Forest team. The defence is not organised. Look how many guys are just running in and not marking anyone. It's 2 1. So here we go into the second half. Apparently, I've stressed out the whole defence, but they should be stressed out anyway of how shit they're playing. I like now Carvalho picking up the ball, playing through Jill Diaz, who hits the fucking post, but the ball doesn't bounce back to us perfectly, does it? No. Free kick now, Panagiotis. Again, nothing. Free kick now, in the box, and it's a penalty. Sudani will be taking the penalty for his 25th goal. Can he score it? Sudani. What the fuck? Highlight now for Forrest. Jack Robinson with a cross. Nothing to come from it. Panagiotis sending it wide to Byron. Can Byron find someone? No. Preston are on the counter-attack. Maguire sending it over. Robinson picks the ball back up. Sends it up the pitch to Carvalho. Carvalho sending it through to Sudani. Who fucking misses. Goncalves to Carvalho. And he's on his ass. 83rd minute highlight now. Can we get a goal? Carvalho. Cash playing it to Robinson. Robinson... Cash trying to shoot, can't quite do it! Virgil Gomez has scored! Two all, come on! Sudani's playing dog shit, so I brought on Gomez and look, the boy's got a goal on his second game in a Nottingham Forest shirt. Gone Calvez shooting and Gomez putting his head in the way, come on! Highlight now, are Preston going to make this 3 2? Playing it around the middle, Clark to Robinson, Robinson playing it through. Ball picked up again. Figueredo to Smith. Smith sends it out, up the pitch. Ball comes back. Robinson to Panagiotis to Carvalho. Carvalho to send it to Goncalves. It's a corner in the 88th minute. Can we score? Osborne. And it's in! Virgil Gomez has scored two goals. Oh my god, I cannot believe what I am seeing right now. Virgil Gomez running across the 20 yard box and putting it in. Come on! Blow the whistle, ref. Blow the fucking whistle, ref. Blow it! It's. Yes! <laughs> we did it! Oh my god, we're going to Wembley. It's only for Wembley as well. Oh my god. What an emotional roller coaster. Fuck me. Oh my god. So as you can see, that is full time and fuck me did we deserve it. Carvalho scoring in the 16th minute. Callum Robinson equalising. Nine minutes later. Daniel Johnson putting them ahead in the 46th minute. Sudani missing a penalty in the 60th minute and missing another sitter before putting him on a 6 rating. Caused me to take him off the pitch. And Virgil Gomez, the young hero, has scored two goals in the 84th and 90th minute to send us to Wembley. Oh my god, what a story. This kid's gonna fucking... Oh my god, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I'm so fucking exasperated, if that's even the right word. Holy shit, I am ecstatic right now. Fuck me, Virgil Gomez, you hero. So as you can see, we will be playing West Brom on Monday the 27th of May 2019. This will determine... Who is going up to the Premier League? Will it be Forest, or will it be West Bromwich Albion? I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know our past fixtures against West Brom, so I I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm looking forward to it, and this definitely has rounded off this save. Good to, uh, in in a good way for me. Uh, getting to the uh, playoff finals was definitely the. The second biggest objective I could have probably pulled off. So, yeah. Let's get to that game. And let's hope that we can get a win for Forest And put them into the Premier League. Where a club of this stature deserves to be. So, all these episodes have come down to this. The final game of the season. It will be against West Brom at Wembley. And it will be for promotion or stagnation. <laughs> in a sense. So... Yeah, because it's the last game, I thought I'd read out the uh, team and the bench just before we do get into the game. So in goal, we have Jordan Smith, 
Definitely hasn't played many uh, many games this season compared to Pantelimon, but has probably been a better choice of keeper than Pantelimon over the past few months, so he makes the cut. Back four of Byram and Robinson at fullback. Robinson been an outstanding left back this season. Lazio probably will be a better left back, but Robinson deserves to play this game and he's definitely on better form at the moment. Byram, again, played outstanding for the majority of this season. Yanko has just fallen off massively, so Byram's stepped in and done a fantastic job so that's why those two get in the team Figueredo and Hefele first choice centre backs really you can't really argue with it um, Danny Fox has been good when he's been called upon but um, that's about it really Michael Dawson hasn't really been the best centre back choice this season so yeah it's got to be them two uh, the midfield Tashdidis playing deep line playmaker didn't start uh, at the start of the season because of some injuries he had but when he did come in he did add just a completely different thing this season definitely been the best defensive midfielder we've had um, only just beating Jakob at that that is the midfield duo however of Cash and Osborne has just been brilliant this whole season and you can't knock it really so those two are going to start anyway I don't think there's need I don't think I need to say much about these two you know Matty Cash with eight goals this season, Ben Osborne with seven, um, a few assists underneath their belts as well. They've done well. And finally, as we do get to the end of the first team, uh, on the left-hand side will be Carvalho. Hard choice for me, but Goncalves hasn't been playing as well in the past few games, and Carvalho did score in the last game. So Carvalho will be playing the first half. Whether or not he stays on is entirely down to how well he plays in the first half, but... If he doesn't play well enough, Goncalves will be starting that second half. So don't you worry, Goncalves will get what he deserves. Uh, on the right-hand side, Gil Diaz. If Joe Lolly was still here, he'd probably be playing because he was on form. But he's currently playing for West Brom, who we are now playing. So again, it's a no-brainer for Gil Diaz to be there. So yeah, it was that or Matty Cash, but Matty Cash is playing centre mid. And finally, with 24 goals this season, is Hilal Sudani perhaps our best player of the season? It's either him, Gon Calvez, or Jill Diaz, really, who get that best player of the season um, reward. So, yeah, there's no chance that he wasn't going to play, even after his poor game um, in the last game. But yeah, that is the first team, playing the 4-3-3 that we've played since game four, after I found out it was ridiculously good for us. Um... I'll get through the bench real quickly. Pantilamon, Lazure, Danny Fox, uh, Claudio Jacob, Ryan Yates, uh, Diogo Goncalves and Virgil Gomez after scoring the two goals to get us here. Definitely deserves to be on the bench. Definitely more so than Lewis fucking Graben. But anyway, let's get into this game and let's hope that we can put Forrest back in the Premier League where it belongs. So here we are, both teams lining up. Quick team talk and... West Brom are to kick off the first half in the final game of the season. Highlight now, the first highlight of the game, Panagiotis to Osborne. Osborne back to Panagiotis. Finds Cash. Cash plays it back to Hefele. Hefele finds Byron. Byron to Diaz. Diaz to Sudani. And Sudani hits the post again. Highlight now, West Brom have the ball. Playing it around the middle. Good tackle there from Panagiotis. Osborne picks it up on a counter-attack. Shoots and nearly scores. Johnston with a good save. Goal kick now. Johnston to send it up the pitch. Figueredo winning it but putting it back into West Brom possession. Sudani pressing the centre-backs hard. Making them play it backwards. Johnston to kick it up the pitch again. Hefele clearing out to Morrison. But Diaz picks it up. Plays through Sudani and it's 1-0. Come on. 43rd minute, Hilal Sudani scores his 25th goal of the season. Morrison losing the ball, Osborne with a good tackle, plays it wide to Diaz. Diaz nearly stumbling with that touch, but plays through a perfect ball to Sudani, and Sudani puts it in the back of the net and doesn't hit the post. Come on! So that is the end of the first half, and as you can see, we're all over them at the moment. Six shots, four on target, 56% possession. We're doing well. Sam Johnston is the only thing keeping them in this game at the moment with three shots saved. Meanwhile, Tobias Figueredo is our best player at the moment on a 7.2. So that does mean that they're doing something, but he's keeping them out. So come on, boys. We can do this. Just need a good old team talk to get the morale up. We start the second half with Carvalho coming off and Goncalves coming on. 
Free kick now for Forrest. Johnston to pick it up. It is the 93rd minute and it is still 1-0. No highlights have happened in the second half. And that is full time. And Forrest are back in the Premier League. We've done it. We've achieved what we set out at the start of the season. And that's to get a big club such as Forrest back in the Premier League where they belong. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. The lads played so well. Second half could have been a bit better. But... We just dominated. I mean, 62% possession, 13 shots. Again, only five on target, but but yeah, we've done it, and <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so happy we managed to actually get to the Premier League. I didn't want to end this just by staying in the Championship. West Brom, by the way, came into this beating Derby 3-0 in one of these. Uh, in one of the semi-finals so yeah as you can see all the players in the left there celebrating me holding the cup it's fantastic one thing I would like to point out Joe Lolly was their worst player on the pitch that day so maybe it was a blessing in disguise that we got rid of him to West Brom if only I can look back at it now me selling him and being worried who knew that it would have led to him being on 6.3 in the final and us getting that win but yeah I'm so happy like the lads deserve this. I'm saying it like they're actual people, but the players deserve this. The fans deserve this. And yeah, now on to the celebrations, I suppose. So as you can see, Nottingham Forest promoted. Nottingham Forest have won promotion to the English Premier Division. It was a season of unlikely yet jubilant success for the Reds, who consistently defied the odds and enjoyed a strong spell of form from around January that would ultimately carry them to a finishing position few would have predicted. Pivotal match was our 5-0 win against Wigan, which I completely forgot about. Um, key player, Diogo Goncalves, 7.62 average rating. I can't knock it. He's definitely been one of our best players this season. Has spells where he stops doing stuff, but it's been brilliant so far. It's been fantastic from the boys. One thing that has annoyed me is Graben has been paid a bonus of £200,000 as a result of the team winning promotion to this uh, from the Skybet Championship. He doesn't deserve a single penny from that because he's done jack shit. Gomez has done more than him this entire season by scoring those two goals in the semi-final than he has any other game. So, yeah. Just thought I'd say that. Put a bit of a dampener on the mood, but it's true. The board have set an initial budget for us next season. Uh, the wage budget uh, will be 625k and the transfer budget will be roughly 37 million. So... That's a good bit to play with. Psycho was surprised by uh, my team and he's surprised that we managed to get promotion from the championship, which is fair enough. I wouldn't really have a go at him for it, but yeah, it's definitely one that I don't think a lot of people expected up until around about November, December time. So yeah, so happy. So as you can see, this is the Nottingham Forest end of season awards. Fans player of the season went to Diogo Goncalves with 36% of the vote. Jack Robinson getting 27% of the vote at second. And Tobias Figueredo getting 23% of the vote at third, which is definitely very accurate. And I'd agree with that. Goal of the season, um, Diogo Goncalves versus Bristol City, which we will see in just a second. But before we do that, I want to check all these awards out. Signing of the season, Daniel Lazure, 889k from Zaragoza. Definitely a very good signing for us. And young player of the season is Diogo Goncalves. Diogo Goncalves sweeping the awards season for Nottingham Forest. Again, he's been outstanding and he definitely deserves all of these awards. In speaking about these awards, here is Goncalves' goal that got him um, goal of the season. I mean, it's alright. It's not really the best, but... I'll take it. So this is our season review. Nottingham Forest had been expected to be in the running for a playoff place, but performed even better than expected in securing promotion to the Premier Division. It was a season of unlikely yet jubilant success for the Reds, who consistently defied the odds and enjoyed a strong spell of form around January that would ultimately carry them to a finishing position few would have predicted. Sky Sports. Um, didn't do well in the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. That's definitely one of my main um, sort of... Um, even better if points um, of this um, season, definitely. Um, I mean, going out to this Bournemouth in the Carabao Cup second round, we got kind of a bad draw there, so 
you know, that's that was fair enough. But losing to Blackburn, Blackburn did have a good season and that, I will give them that. But losing to him in the third round, it's just a bit annoying, really. So luckily us getting to the Premier League does make up for those two things happening. And I think if we were still in those cups, we might not have done as well in the league. So got to take that into account. Uh, match to match of the season, sorry, uh, our 5-0 win against Wigan, which I uh, have forgot, but um, I'll probably go back and check it on a video um, later and uh, remember all the goals. And uh, moments to forget was the recent loss to Middlesbrough, which was 4-1, which was quite embarrassing. 91% uh, full stadium on average uh, during the season, so that's pretty impressive. And uh, a total of 27 players you've joined 8th highest in the Skybet Championship. And as you can see, our league position chart um, through the season definitely went bad around about, well, I'm guessing that'd be uh, December, this, uh, November, December time. Um, but we managed to pull it back January-ish. And um, yeah, it was second for quite a while. Third dropped to fourth at one point. Managed to get back up to second, but ultimately couldn't, couldn't quite get into that automatic promotion spot. But nonetheless, still a great season from us. Okay, so no wonder the fans gave Goncalves the goal of the season from our club's point of view because it did get goal of the season in the championship. Uh, I don't know, it was it was an alright goal, yeah, but I've, I mean, from 24 yards out as well, pretty impressive, but like, I don't know, <laughs> there was probably a better one somewhere, some overhead kick from someone, but anyway, I'll take that. Finally, Goncalves and Sudani make it into the uh, uh, players' team of the year. Goncalves and Sudani definitely deserve to be in that team. A lot of Leeds players, too, definitely deserve to be in there. Narsing makes it for Preston, and Mulgrew makes it for Blackburn. So, uh, a very strong championship team, and I definitely do agree with it. So, yeah, that is the end of this season, and... We have completed it nicely. We've got to the Premier League. We've got 37 million to spend next season, 650k in wage, and we've got a lot of uh, stuff to work out. One thing we do need to do, however, now is have a chat about this series and decide what we want to do. So, as I have mentioned from time to time during this series, I have uh, talked about what I would do in the next season. Now, it always has been a idea of mine to carry on with this series uh, because I enjoy it. Um, I was mainly going to carry it on until I got into the Premier League. So if I didn't win that Wembley game, regardless, we would have been seeing a second season of um, this Nottingham Forest campaign, or at least I would have been here until I got sacked. Now, I am in the Premier League, which does come with its challenges, especially coming up from a championship side into the Premier League, because one of the hardest things to do in the uh, Premier League after coming out from the Championship is stay up and also make signings that are good signings and you can and, and will stay with you for two or three seasons. Something of which I've never been good at. So it will be a challenge for me to use that 37 million wisely to get players in that are actually going to be good and useful. Um, and yeah, in, in, in all in all, just stay in the Premier League. So I have decided that I will carry on with the series in um, tandem with the other Football Manager series that I'm going to start. So hopefully I'll be able to get them out uh, both on a weekly basis, but I will speak more about it in the um, first or second episode of the other Football Manager series that I'm doing uh, next. But I do want to carry on with this series. It is going to be interesting because I've never managed to successfully keep a team in the Premier League after going up from the Championship on any football manager. And I've gone up with Fulham. I've, come up, I've gone up with Plymouth Argyle. I've gone up with... Um, oh, who was the other one? Uh, Aston Villa. And for me, what lets me down is the signings I make and the fact that they're not as uh, beneficial. And also just the fact that the Premier League is just another level. Like, it's just up there you know ten, there's 10 teams in there that can get three points from you easy so it does become scrappy at the bottom of the table but i will definitely carry on with this series i have enjoyed it and yeah it will be in tandem with the series uh that i'll also be doing which should be the way i think i'm going to do it is i'm going to have the new series come out on Saturdays and this series come out on Tuesdays, hopefully. But more will more will be um, that will be talked about more in either the episodes of the new series or on my Twitter. If you haven't followed my Twitter, by the way, 
at JDFC Games. It's on the screen right now. Go follow it. I don't post much, but I will be now posting on a regular basis what's going on with these series and if there's anything else that I'm gonna I'm gonna do on the channel. So it's a good way to sort of keep in touch with me. And you know, if I randomly leave for two weeks, you'll know about it because it'll be on the Twitter. So yeah, definitely go do go follow that if you want to keep up to date. Anyway, in terms of this new series, it will be another Football Manager series. It will be me taking on another club and trying to get them further up. Who that is, though, I won't let you guys know. You can guess all you like. You might get it, you might not, but it's going to be a good one, and I'm really looking forward to it. So, yeah, on that on, on that further ado, I'm happy with this um, season. We've got up to the Premier League. We've played well. Now it's about keeping the players who did well for us, selling some players on, and, yeah, making Nottingham Forest a Premier League club again. But until then, it's um, goodbye from me. And, yeah, if you liked the video, uh, please do leave a like. If you've got anything you want to say about the series, then um, do let me know in the comments section. I read all the comments. Uh, I respond to the ones that, well, I guess need a response. Um, but, yeah. Uh, and, again, if there's any issues with this series or anything that's not making it entertaining for me, do let me know in the comments section because if it's not entertaining for you guys, then we do have an issue and this series is here to be entertaining for you guys. So, yeah. Uh, I think I've said it a lot of times now, but it's um, goodbye from me and I shall see you in my new series. And, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. See you guys in the next one.